Welcome back, my friends. Welcome to episode 12. I wanted to kind of wrap up the strategic movement phase. I showed you some security operations. And when you finish a security operation, let's say this unit here finished his security operation. Let me try that again. There we go. So we kind of were looking at some units in this area in our last video. Let's say this guy finished his move and the reaction movement is done. So when we're finished, when he's finished with his operation, security operation, he puts an ops complete marker on. So what that does is that indicates that that unit is no longer eligible to do any operations for the remainder of the game turn. The U.S. player can continue to do security, strategic movement, and naval movement. Those are the three types of movement during the strategic movement phase. That he can continue to do those operations until he is finished, uh, meaning he says, all right, I'm done. Um, so the U.S. player says, I'm done. And then we move on to the next phase. This process we're going through is playing a game turn. So there's the setup period where we do support, strategic movement phase, hold patrols, things like that, um, before we start into the operations phase. So when we go into the operations phase, this is mostly what you're going to be doing throughout the game. So the operations phase um, works more or less like this. It's you have the NLF player has control over who takes the next operation. So the NLF player will, can say, I will take an operation, or I'm going to grant the US player an operation. So once the, um, so if he grants himself the operation, you do it, it's marked complete. Then he says, if he grants the US player an operation, you do it, marked ops complete. And you do this, you, you go through this cycle of operations until the NLF player says, U.S. player, I grant you an operation. The U.S. player says, I don't want an operation. And the NLF player says, I don't want an operation. And then it's done. Um, it, more or less, you come to a mutual agreement. It's not real structured in terms of consecutive passes or anything like that. So you play until both sides agree that they are finished with operations. And it's mostly going to be driven by the ops complete markers. You have enough ops complete markers on the board, you're going to um, run out of things that you can do. This is kind of what a region might look like further into the game when you have completed, uh, when the U.S. player has done several consecutive operations. You can see there's a, a littering of ops complete markers and the two units that are not marked ops complete happen to be ineffective Arvin units. So this is a, an example of why you might say, I pass, no operation. I plan on spending the next several videos, by that I mean probably the next 30 or 40 videos, just going through different types of operations, different types of combat, because this is essentially what the game is about. Um, that's mostly what you're going to be doing. At some point, I'll have to introduce pacification since we skipped it early on. So, the NLF player has granted himself the next operation. So, the NLF player declares that he's going to do a strategic movement operation. I promised I would go over this later because somebody mentioned that I said strategic movement's done, and he's right, it's not done because NLF strategic movement's very different. So, the NLF player is going to declare these two units here are going to be activated for strategic move. So strategic move works very different for uh, the NLF player than it does for the US player. So by activating those two, we're going to say, okay, I'm going to show you this unit. NLF player does not have to reveal the unit, doesn't have to confirm that, you know, it has the movement points available, you're, you're on your honor. 
So uh, NLF hidden units, I'm just showing it for movement purposes. Um, it's got a move of seven. So for a strategic move, I triple that. I can go 21 movement points. So we need to see what we have here. It's a, it's a zero point unit, it's zero combat factor. So it has no zone of control. So we go into the mountains for three, into the mountains for another three, so that's six. The escarpment is an extra two, so eight, 11 to there. Now we check this unit, another zero point unit, so no zone of control. Into the forested hills for 14. And you can see in this, this heavy terrain, it, you run out of movement points quick. 14 and 3 is 17. 17 and 3 is 20. He's going to stop there. So he's told the, uh, by, by moving more than 18, which is 6 times 3, you've told the uh, U.S. player that you have a 7-point unit, which is the fastest that the NLF gets. So he says that, that unit has finished his movement. Still within the same operation, he's going to move the other unit. He's going to go here. Now, this gentleman here has a zone of control. So it costs one to leave. Three to go into the, into the mountains. So we're up to four. Leave this guy's zone of control. Five. Eight. Eleven. I didn't show you what the unit is. He's got six movement points. Check our unit here. He does have a zone of control. Zero point units don't have a zone of control. Most of the units do. Let's look at that again. We're at 11. So that is an Arvin Battalion. Arvin Battalions do not have zone of control. So I can go right around that guy. Eleven and three is fourteen, and three is seventeen. So he had a move of six times three is eighteen. So he's gone as far as he can go. He's marked off as complete. So is that the end of the operation? What you think about that? Is there something else? There's one more thing. He's ended his movement there. That gives the Arvin unit the opportunity to do a reaction move. So this unit can move. So he will. He spends one to leave that guy's zone of control. Three for the mountains. He's there for four. And he'll go here for seven. That ends the operation. So that is an Arvin strategic move operation. And we will do more operations and more operations and more operations. See you at the next video.